live from parts unknown. You're listening to Simon Miller's Pro Wrestling Podcast, the only wrestling podcast on the planet. We think. Sit back, relax, prepare for positivity to run through your veins as Simon Miller gives you your weekly dose of powerful pro wrestling audio. It is Miller Time. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Simon Miller's Pro Wrestling Show. I know we're smashing them out this week, but as I said, there's a lot to talk about. And also, I wanted to make sure that I got through the, quite frankly, the overwhelming amount of patrons that, that want to get on. I never say this. I'll say it now. It's genuinely humbling, the amount of people that want to come on and have a chat about wrestling. When I first started doing this, um, as always, there's always the odd naysayer. It's like, oh, I don't get what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. But as it turns out, and I think as a lot of people have, uh, have realized, it's an amazing way to share the love of wrestling through a community And have some really interesting chats. I love it. It's one of my favorite things I do all week. Uh, So thank you to everyone that supports me at patreon.com forward slash Simon316. And yes, you can also take that as a cheap plug. Uh, Today, all the way from America, he's eight hours behind, which I respect massively. It's my man, Nicholas. Nicholas, how are you doing today? I'm doing really good, Simon. Good. I'm glad. Well, dude, as we just chatted about before we started, thank you so much for coming on. Um, Right. We always do this. I'm sure you know. You've heard it before. Just give me kind of uh the lay of the the lay of the land when it comes to pro wrestling how did you become a fan and we'll get into what you think about it now as well as maybe chat some aew because uh, some quite big things dropped in the last uh, 48 hours or so but let's start at the beginning how do you get into wrestling why do you love it who's your guy or your girl potentially uh yeah give me the 411 my friend all right well um i mean i've pretty much been watching wrestling my entire life really um, when I was a little kid, uh, Bret Hart was my idol, if you can believe that. I certainly can, man. I've been there. I, I, I know, I know. He's, he, I, and he did it to a lot of people as well, dude. Just there's something magic about Bret Hart when you're a kid. I know. I was, I was jealous of every kid that he gave his sunglasses to. In the front <laughs> oh yeah. Did you ever buy a pair? I bought, I bought a pair and it just wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. I, I wish I'd owned a pair. Believe me, I'd, I'd probably still have them to this day. Oh, I've still got mine. I know exactly. I mean, they're at my parents' house, but I, I know exactly exactly what they are. So do you remember seeing Bret Hart for the first time, or is it just sort of a, you know, like a, a vague memory, but you knew that it was the hitman that got you involved? Uh, it, it would probably be just that, you know. Um, some with Bret Hart just clicked with me. Um, I was a little too young to, you know, be in the Hogan era. But, uh, you know, he, he was just a little before my time. But, yeah, like, Bret Hart was my man when I was a kid. Um, so, anyway, back to my uh, wrestling background. Um, but I actually uh, also want to give a shout-out to uh, my older brother, Danny, who lives in uh, Washington State. Um, he's... Uh, He's also responsible for why I love wrestling so much because uh, both of us were wrestling fans growing up. And, uh, I mean, when when the Attitude Era came around, I mean, man, th- there was nothing better. You know, oh, yeah. we we, uh, we made up like our own little wrestling federation at home. You know, we would use cardboard boxes as tables. I've been put through a couple of them. <laughs> Hell uh, yeah, man. <laughs> We, we had, like, an actual steel chair that we would hit each other with. Like, not in the head. I know, obviously, back in the day, they were doing a lot of chair shots to the head. But, you know, we weren't doing that. Because it was a real chair we were using, you know. <laughs> it wasn't fake. But, I mean, yeah, just so many amazing memories growing up uh, with him. Um, unfortunately, my uh, my brother stopped watching wrestling as soon as may young gave birth to a hand well i mean <laughs> dude it's it's hard it's hard to argue like if some if i met him tomorrow said that i'd probably just nod my head and go yeah bro i get it i understand like you know that that, that makes perfect sense so, so yeah he's been uh he hasn't been watching wrestling for a while but you know i've managed to like continue watching this whole time i believe there was a period where i wasn't watching but to be honest i i really couldn't tell you when exactly that was and for how long i mean i i think i remember a time when i wasn't watching but but i i still remember watching mostly just a long time 
so let's jump forward to uh, 2016. Yeah. My older brother actually, ironically, introduced me to what culture? Okay. Well, I like it. I like this guy. He's, he's doing my work for me. <laughs> Well, well, it started because uh, he knew I was a fan of like top 10 lists. And so uh, he told me about this website called What Culture that does a lot of t- top 10 lists. And there's one that's, you know, dedicated primarily to wrestling. And, you know, and so I, I started watching and it was very, uh, very enjoyable. And then I forgot exactly what it was, but uh, but then I saw these uh, – Videos called ups and downs, and all of a sudden, like, <laughs> who the heck is this bald buffoon yeah. pointing his finger up and down? <laughs> exactly. Talking about Repo Man, who I never even <laughs> even forgot existed, you know. But I mean, I, I I was like, I was hooked, you know. It's like as soon as like Raw and SmackDown were over, I was like, uh, it's part of my routine, you know. Every uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, I watch ups and downs during my lunch break. You know? oh, I love it, man. I love it, dude. That that means the world to me, man. Like, you know, sometimes when you're recording them, you don't really think about where they go or who watches them. So to hear that is awesome, dude. Thank you, man. That that puts a smile on my face. You're welcome. So so anyway, and then obviously, I, you know, I kept uh, in touch with what culture. I, I'm subscribed to pretty much all their channels now. So uh, you guys are really, all of you there are awesome. Um, anyway. But then, obviously, the kind of the old guard of what culture went off to start uh, Cultaholic, and and I've really uh, I I uh, kept in touch with uh, with them. Well, I I would watch their videos too because you know I I really enjoy what they're doing. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, so so yeah, when it comes to Raw and SmackDown, I've pretty much been keeping up on it since the beginning uh but in terms of like the other products like you know 205 live nxt and nxt uk um you know the i really like where 205 live is right now i'm, I'm glad that you know triple h is the one that's looking after it because it's truly an amazing show um and obviously nxt is amazing and, and actually that's what i want to get into um the first time I watched NXT was actually only two years ago. Uh, the first NXT show I watched was Takeover uh, before uh, Mania Thirty Three, I believe. Okay. That was the one where uh, Bobby Roode and Shinsuke Nakamura fought for the NXT title yeah. in the main. Man, that feels like so a different world first... now. Oh yeah, tell me about it. Um, so, so that was the first Takeover show I. I saw basically my first NXT show and I'm like, wow, what an amazing show. And, and it's funny because I, uh, another wrestling podcast I listened to is uh, Steven Larson's going in raw. Uh, lovely guys. Love so, him. Love him. Yeah. Yeah. Funny guys. Anyway. So I would watch their recaps of NXT, even though I wasn't even really watching the show, but they just kept saying how amazing the show was. So finally I said, all right, I'll just maybe I'll look in NXT. And so, like I said, I watched my first show and then, and now I'm starting to catch up on like old NXT. You know, I, uh, I started on the first episode that they filmed at full sale, which is back in 2012, if you can believe it. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's amazing how different the landscape was back then, but I'm, I'm still getting caught up, you know, I'm, I think I'm in around like 2014 or something, but still, it's just amazing to see like all the, the main roster superstars where they are now, uh, looking back at where they were then. And then, you know, NXT UK, I've been watching since the beginning. Um, cause it's fairly new show. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm just enjoying everything right now. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much, uh, all I gotta say, I mean, I want. How do I phrase? It? I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just intrigued. So you, you're enjoying mm-hmm. it right now. Obviously, we're coming off the week where you know everybody went crazy about Raw. What do you think about this week's episode of Raw? And I, I, that sounds like a loaded question. There is no right or wrong answer. I'll be the first person to say I think people went in hindsight, and now it's all calmed down. I think people went a little bit too overboard with just how bad. I'm not saying it was a good show, but I think people went a little bit too overboard. But I like it, man, because you are someone that's clearly quite invested in WWE, and I appreciate that, especially in the you know current culture where everyone seems to hate them. What did you think about this week's WWE TV? I mean. 
you know, uh, for as much uh, YouTube content as I watch uh, with all my wrestling YouTubers, you know, like I definitely understand the frustrations they have mm. in terms of creative and and all that stuff. And 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 first of all, uh, I for I forgot to mention this, but every week I watch Raw and SmackDown after they air because I don't have cable here at my house. So I have to rely on Hulu to watch it the next day. Yeah. And for those that don't know on Hulu, uh, raw is like completely cut in half. You're only watching like a 90 minute version. So like half the show I miss. So, um, so, so a lot of the stuff that people are complaining about, I don't really see unless I happen to see it on like Facebook or YouTube or, or wherever. Um, I mean, yeah, like the the segment with the Usos and the Revival. I never saw any of that stuff on the Hulu version because I guess when they were editing, they were like, oh, this sucks. Just just cut it out, you know? Yeah. But um, but again, I, I understand people's frustration. Um, like I said, I'm getting caught up on old NXT, so I'm sure I'm, gonna, I'm going to see firsthand how amazing the Revival was in NXT. Um, they, they are definitely a tag team that deserves to be, you know, tr- treated like superstars. And then, you know, just obviously seeing them in these embarrassing segments and then obviously throwing the Usos in there, which are also a great tag team. They don't really deserve to, <laughs> to be dragged along through that, you know. <sighs> well, I don't know. You know? That, that's the weird that I think that the thing for me. Is that why? Why the, that's why I don't get like even if WWE and we, we won't talk about this too long. So I know we've talked about this all week. But the thing I can't get my head around, hence why I always jump on it when it comes up, is I can't. I, well, I don't understand somebody wanting to drag somebody else down. But I find it even more crazy that you do that and take out the Usos as well. I can't understand it. That's the big thing for me. It's like why would surely somebody would have gone? You know, if we do this, we will take out Jimmy and Jay. Yeah, we're doing it anyway. It's like why? Just don't do it. That's the one thing I can't understand. I know it's like the 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 Usos for a long time were just you know those. Uh, I mean, they've always been a good tag team. It's just they were baby faces for so long that it started to get boring. But then you know once they actually got some attitude and be- and became some really good heels, you know it was like man, what a quick turnaround! And now they're. They're honestly one of my favorite tag teams now. Oh, yeah, me too. Absolutely. But, but yeah, to see them uh, uh, being part of this, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The uh, the, the, the higher-ups uh, spite towards the revival, you know? It's like, why do they need to be part of this, you know? I, I mean, almost any other team would have done fine but not not the usos that they they deserve way better i, I i'm not, and look i'm the revival definitely deserve better but it's just again they're they want to leave and the management want to punish them punish them for that mm. it, it's not mm. fair you know it's strange. It is strange. I, I, I want to touch upon this before we move on to other things, just because we talked about mm-hmm. it in the podcast that went up on Friday. This is going up on the Sunday, so a couple of days ago. Go check it out. Uh, there is some, well, I, I mean, literally after that podcast went up, it turned out that Lars Sullivan, obviously that's who we were discussing on that podcast, had offered uh, an apology. It came out through WWE. It was very corporately worded. Take that for what you will. It basically said that's not the person he is these days, and he regrets his actions. Uh, but on Wrestling Observer Live today... Uh, Brian Alvarez also said that uh, Lars Sullivan talked to Big E and all members of the New Day and apparently apologized for them, said it was in the past. Uh, and so there you go. That's just an update on that. Give me your thoughts on that, man, because we did talk about it and then we're going to move on to other things. But uh, I think we kind of put that to bed the other Well, no, we didn't put it to bed, but in terms of our discussions, there's not really much more to say. Did you see any of that, though? I did not. Oh, well, there we go. Well, we can just draw a line on it there. Very nice and easy. He said some bad things. That's pretty much the long and the short of it. Well, I mean, at least, uh, I mean, because, I mean, Hogan didn't really apologize in person to them, did he? Because, I mean, already that already puts Lars at a, uh, it, it paints him as a better person than Hogan. If he was willing to, you know, speak to them man to man, 
and say he was sorry. Yeah, you know? the, the Hogan thing was, I'm sorry for getting caught, was uh, <laughs> was, uh, <laughs> was very difficult. was very, very difficult. Uh, right, let's move on, because I want to talk about uh, <laughs> I want to talk about All Elite Wrestling, and I want to talk about TNT. Now, you will know about this more than I, because you understand the American television system. Uh, so we mm-hmm. already, we, earlier in the week, we talked about ITV signing up AEW, and now, amazingly, All Elite Wrestling is going back on the same station as WCW used to be on. Now, if you're a young chap, that would mean nothing to you, but for someone like me who is old, old and broken uh, and remembers world champions wrestling that is just incredible like it doesn't mean that all elite wrestling are now all of a sudden going to become a force like world championship wrestling were in like 97 96 but it is there is some poetic irony to it and if nothing else that's a huge station you know and, and it's not you know no offense to impact but when they went on the pursuit channel even i was like what the hell is the pursuit channel and what my point being is i'd never even heard of it i know what tnt is and i know about it more specifically because of as a wrestling fan the monday night wars have been drummed into all of our heads now obviously this should get confirmed properly on wednesday and as it is considered a rumor at the moment we should underline it but it's one of those rumors that if it turns out not to be true there'll be more questions going well what the hell happened this certainly seemed like uh, seemed like the case do tell me your impressions of aew how you feel about it clearly you're very very passionate about wwe which i love do you want to watch it does them being on tnt make it more interesting just uh, kind of fill me in let's say that it is a it is a lot that's going to happen how do you think that will affect the wrestling industry going forward? Um, so, uh, uh, just to give a, another little brief backstory, trust me, it, it won't be that long. Yeah, but dude, you take your time, in, man. In I love of, hearing it. Just uh, in terms of independent wrestling, I'm, I'm honestly not really keeping up because, I mean, you know, WWE always takes up a lot of my time anyway. So, I mean... But but again, that's why I look to my wrestling YouTubers to give me yeah. some. You've already got you know, so much time in the day on on the on the indie circuit, you know. And um, I mean, I can say like the first like the first like independent wrestling match that I watched in its entirety was uh, uh, Chris Jericho versus Kenny Omega, their, their first meeting. Yeah, I watched that match in full, and it, it was pretty amazing. And then I think I watched like the last ten minutes of. Uh, Omega and Okada at Dominion, but uh, I could just tell by looking at them, like, man, these guys, <laughs> they're exhausted, you know, that they're putting themselves through the ringer, but that's what makes them the best wrestlers in the world right now. Um, and then, all right, so now going on to AEW, um, I, I'm liking it, you know, it's, uh, I, I like, uh, I like the uh, Cody and the Young Bucks, uh, you know, prove Dave Meltzer wrong that they could fill an entire 10,000 plus seat arena um, with no matches announced at the time, you know? Yeah, oh, amazing. Uh, yeah, absolutely amazing. And, and that's the thing. Like, when I heard about All In, I was like, uh, okay, you know, that's cool, whatever. But then as the date got closer and closer, I, I began to really feel the hype and the interest around it. So I'm like, all right, let's look into this. And so I, I watched all in from the comfort of my bedroom and it was one of the best shows I'd ever seen. Yeah. No, I honestly, man, I loved it. And I, I, I don't think it's as good as I thought at the time. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean, I really bought into the hype, but that's the point. The hype is part of the show. It's like when I watch a boxing match, sometimes I go back and watch it again. and go, no, half of that was hype. It's like rock Hogan, right? Half of it is <laughs> hype, but that's okay. It just means it lives somewhat in a bubble. But I love it. I think it's a great show. And I think maybe it's another another reason it's a great show is because it kind of feels like it's catching what's going on in professional wrestling at the moment in a bubble. And that's why that's why I find it so exciting. And dude, the fact that you were, you know, like you said, you're very WWE centric, but you still found the need to watch Jericho Omega. I think that's incredible, man. And I think it's those kind of stories which goes to show that all these naysayers about AEW, oh, we don't know what they're going to do. They're just a t-shirt company. Yeah, you're 100% correct. We don't. But there's a lot of evidence on the surface to suggest that if it does go well, a lot of people won't necessarily jump away from WWE, but maybe they find an extra hour or two hours in their weekly schedule just to see what they're going to do. And if they do well, we'll stay with them and we'll give them the, you know, we'll give them some more time. And if they don't, we'll just go back to the status quo. That, to me, is still massive. When was the last time that happened? You know, you could, you could even argue, you know, maybe it's been 20 years, you could argue. I, I would take that argument if somebody wanted to put it across. Exactly. Um, 
So, so yeah, All In was a great show, and then obviously they make the big announcement that they're <clears throat> starting their own promotion, All Elite Wrestling. Once again, I was like, all right, you know, awesome. You know, uh, competition is healthy. You know, N nothing, uh, nothing's better than competition. The way <laughs> is the way I see it. And then when their first show was announced, uh, Double or Nothing. Um, and I found out where it was. Uh, by the way, Simon, do you know where I live? Jacksonville. <laughs> no. I, I don't know. I know you live in LA, I, don't you? I thought you were in California. I live right outside Las Vegas. Oh, dude, are you going? I'm going. <laughs> oh, dude, well, we've got to get you back on then when you go. So, okay, well, that's interesting, dude. What was it? Well, no, let me rephrase it. What do you want to see from the show? Now, we can start talking about Double or Nothing. It's only three weeks away. What do you want to see from the show? And tell me, what do you want to see if they, let's say that yeah, they're going to be on TNT. What do you want to see when they do move to TNT? Give me a kind of uh, a, an all-round opinion on AEW going from Double or Nothing in three weeks' time into, say, September, October when they launch on television. I mean, I'm just looking forward to, you know, seeing some great wrestling, you know. I may not know like 90% of the people on the card, but I have the good faith that they're going to put on an amazing show. Um, also, uh, you know, Steven Larson are going to be there, which is going to be amazing. They're going to be at StarCast that weekend as well. Um, hopefully try and meet them for the first time. Uh, but uh, so, so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to Double or Nothing. Um, in terms of their uh, TV deal, all I can say is if Hulu will put it up the next day, I'm going to watch. So you would, you would, of course, yeah, because you mentioned that. That's interesting as well. I wonder how that does work. How on earth do they, I don't know. I, that's the point. There is so many, there's so many questions to be asked. Do you think that, because you mentioned that you don't know who's on the, you, you don't know everybody that's on the show. I guess is your hope. I mean, did it happen with New Japan? Like, so you watched, um, you watched Omega versus Jericho. Did you just watch that match or did you watch the whole Wrestle Kingdom show? It was just that one match. Okay, right. So with AEW then, as you're going to the whole show and you'll see it, do you see, do you envision a time, it's not the right word, but do you envision a scenario where you will, because you're, you're going to see, again, people you don't know. I guess, is your hope that when you walk away, you think, oh, well, I loved, I loved Omega and I loved Jericho and I love Cody and I love the Young Bucks, but I also love this guy and I love this girl. Now I want to see more of them. And you'll go home and you'll YouTube them, you'll Google them, you'll become a fan. And that way, even organically, you become you know, more invested in the AEW product. Is that, is that what you expect to happen? Or are you just going to, are you basically going because of the, the quote unquote stars? Well, um, you know, I, I, I am just hoping I can kind of wi widen my, uh, my love of wrestling by, uh, by watching wrestlers I'm not normally familiar with. Yeah. I mean, that's how it was you know, when I started watching all the uh, WWE Network shows like 205 Live, NXT UK, like a lot of these people I've never heard of, but seeing the the way they wrestle is incredible. And that's what keeps me tuned in. So, uh, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but yeah, AEW, the, their weekly show is, is on TNT which is a pretty major network here in America. So I imagine that um, like Hulu should have the ability to, to upload it the next day. I, I can't really confirm that until the day actually comes. Uh, but, but again, if, if it doesn't, then like I said, I'll, I'll look to my wrestling YouTubers to, to keep me in touch. What, how does it work with Hulu? Is Hulu allowed to, um, is it allowed? I know they upload. Do they upload WWE stuff because they've got a deal with WWE, or do they upload WWE stuff because they've got a deal with the network, like the USA Network? I really don't know how it works. Um, it's probably a deal with the network uh, because because normally the shows, well, they're supposed to be available like literally from the moment you wake up in the morning. Like like I literally wake up at like five o'clock in the morning. I I check Hulu to see if the new Raw or SmackDown is posted. And if I see it, they're like, okay, I'll start watching it while I get ready for work. So um, I think there is an option to uh, watch stuff live through Hulu, but that's obviously an 
you got to cough up more money for that. Uh, but again, I don't mind waiting till the next day to watch my shows. I mean, that the one thing I do have to do is like stay off of Facebook because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously they're, they're limiting what they're posting through, uh, uh, through social media and stuff because they want to keep viewers watching but but yeah like <laughs> i make that mistake all the time to be honest I, i'll just be browsing through facebook on the night of raw or smackdown and if i see something i try to quickly scroll past it <laughs> and if i'm too late then something's spoiled for me <laughs> oh, but, 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 but it really doesn't matter you know I, i'll still watch it the next morning just to you know get the full experience out of it you know what I mean, we're gonna, I, I know it's a bit of a, a tangent, but the story's just popped up on my feed, so I want to talk to you about this. Right. What What do you think about the, um, the the Saudi Arabia WWE shows? I mean, we'll just we'll just segue into it now. So basically, the rumor at the moment is that the June seventh show is going to be called WWE Sands of Time, which I like instantly, <laughs> and I, I think you'll like it as well because it's named after the Best Prince of Persia game. Uh, well, actually, mm-hmm. I, I quite like Warrior Within, the game that nobody liked. Admittedly, it was too emo, but I thought the gameplay mechanics were better. Anyway, um, <laughs> obviously, it's going to feature Roman Reigns, Undertaker, Kobe Kingston, Paul Strowman, Seth Rollins, Goldberg, AJ Styles, Brock Lesnar, and will stream live on the WWE Network. Yes, I read that from their website. Um, what do you? Th- I mean, because the, the problem we have now, and I really do think this is an issue for WWE outside of what everybody else has been talking about, is. The, the 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 perception to a lot of hardcore internet fans is that WWE is squandering its fan base by making deals such as this, and they don't like it. Same with the third hour of Raw. It may be good for business, but it is, uh, yeah, you know, just it's just not what the fans want to see. As I've said before, the people that want to ignore all of that and enjoy wrestling for what it is, I completely understand because you shouldn't have to deal with politics in your entertainment. I think that's an individual decision for people to make, but. You know, again, just because it ties into news that's just uh, that's just popped up. WWE sounds a time. What do you think of the Saudi Arabia shows, or do you kind of just try and I want to say turn a blind eye because that's not fair. Nobody can do that. Just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling now. I mean, what what's your opinion on them? Well, I mean, I was perfectly fine with them at first. You know, the 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 like when Greatest Royal Rumble was announced, I was like, oh, okay, that's it's an interesting name. I, you know, I wonder what they're I mean, obviously, they're probably going to squeeze in a Royal Rumble match in there. Didn't know it was going to be like a 50-man Royal Rumble. I'm like, oh, man, i got to check this out, you know? And then and, – and at the time, you know, it was a fun show, especially seeing everyone's reaction to Titus O'Neil and that whole debacle. <laughs> I mean, that, that was all over the place. But uh, – so, so, yeah, at the time, uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a good show. But then, obviously, the their next show, Crown Jewel, that's that one had like that's where all the controversy started, especially you know all the horrible stuff going on and over there. Um, I I still watch Crown Jewel, um, but uh, when I saw the obviously the one thing everyone got away from that show was Shane McMahon is the best in the world, you know. <laughs> I mean, I was like, this is gold, you know? (laughs) I mean, it's so outrageously silly that, you know, obviously everyone's going to be talking about it. I mean, I (laughs) just to this day, like, I feel pity for Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic. (laughs) He's, I mean, he just, it's like eating away at him every day. And it's like... Oh man! I don't know. Anyway. What, what happened to Ross? I don't know about this. I, maybe I did, and I've forgotten about it. What happened? <laughs> I mean, he just throws it in there in all his videos. Oh, like, I see. Right. Okay. Never forget that Shane McMahon is the best in the world. <laughs> it's, 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 I know it's it, it's just funny to watch. Anyway, so so I guess what I'm getting at is like I definitely don't agree with you know. I mean, I guess people would call it, you know, blood money that WWE is taking from Saudi Arabia. But, um, like, I, like I'll watch them if, you know, just for, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, like the banter. You know, I'm I'm sure that like there's at least one banter thing that's going to happen on the show that everyone's going <laughs> to so talk about. It's so true. You know, 
Because, like, because again, you know, in Grand Royal Rumble, we had Titus World Slide. At Crown Jewel, we had Shane McMahon, Best in the World. And so it's like, it's almost like, what are they going to do next? That's just absolutely ridiculous and crazy that, you know, you, you just can't help but have a good chuckle at. You know what I'm saying? I, um, I didn't I didn't know about the name though, Sands of Time. Like I, I literally just found that out oh, just man, now. I, honestly, I always have uh, I always have my browser open refreshing sort of pop-ups and news feeds that I had. Yeah, it just came up. It came up from a wrestling site that I follow that said it may be called that, not official, but I guess it makes sense given the Arabian vibe and um yeah and whatnot. But no, I was just intrigued. I was just intrigued. So I thought, hey man, it, it's come up. Why uh, why the hell why the hell not talk about it? Uh let's look forward to Money in the Bank too. Because mm-hmm. we are only two weeks away. Yeah, we, oh my gosh, we've only got one more week of television. Because Money in the Bank is the 19th of May, right? I, I'm, I'm correct in saying that. Or have I got, is it the 26th? So, yeah. Let me double check because if I get it wrong, everyone, I am right. So wow, so there's a week of TV. Well, let's absolutely talk about it. Obviously, we'll do official predictions next week. What, because obviously this week's WWE TV was in panic mode to try and balance out everything that happened the week before with the ratings. We know that. We've talked about it. What do you think WWE needs to do next week? in order to get people excited about Money in the Bank. Who do you want to see win Money in the Bank? Because at the moment, I think if you didn't know the pay-per-view schedule, you may not even have a clue that a pay-per-view is is is, uh, is on the way. And of course, Money in the Bank is one of their big shows. I think when it comes to the big four, you could probably get a lot of people that argue that Survivor Series may play... It may actually... I mean, I think in a lot of people's heads, these days, it goes WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, SummerSlam, Money in the Bank. I think it slots into number four because people have so much good intentions for that match. So what do you want to see, Yeah, like I said, on Raw and SmackDown in the next coming days and looking forward to the event itself? Who wins women's? Who wins men's? And does anybody come out as a champion after a cash-in? Because we have seen that before. Oh, I mean, I really don't know because it almost seems like, you know, they haven't really been building it that much and now they only have like one more rod and one more smackdown before the event so you you gotta hype it up on that episode and if you don't it's like well what's what's even the point um in terms of like who i think would win i mean i just don't know i mean there's i mean there's obviously a few where you know for a fact they're not going to win just because they haven't been booked at all or just very poorly. Um, I'm, I got to say, though, I'm, I'm looking forward to the men's match because because uh, Ricochet's in it, and he is one of my like favorite superstars right now. Like, uh, I mean, I obviously w- uh, saw him come through NXT, and, man, his performance in the the – Ladder match for the North American title, I mean, it, it was insane. And then also in the War Games match, when he did that 6.30 off of the – I was like, my God, this man. I'm really looking forward to see, like, what what he does in the match. Um, I think Mustafa Ali is in the match as well. Is that true? Uh, he is in the match. Yes, let me get the – let me get the actual – a uh, hundred because I mean it, it, it's been so crazy trying to remember who is actually in it is impossible so the men's money in the bank is Braun Strowman versus Ricochet versus Drew McIntyre versus Baron Corbin versus Mustafa Ali versus Finn Balor versus Andrade versus Randy Orton okay so yeah and Mustafa Ali is another one you know he he's my favorite star coming out of 205 Live um I, I know he can do some pretty amazing things again in terms of who would win I don't think Braun will win it because he won it last year. Yeah, and it, it was a it was a complete failure. <laughs> but well, it was just that cash in, wasn't it? Like I was thinking about this the other day. Like you you want a spon not necessarily a spontaneous cash in, but you want a cash in that means something. Like even when Cena cashed in before, it felt like a big deal. But Braun Strowman just randomly, and this is probably ties into some of the issues that Raw's had in terms of getting people back. But Braun Strowman just walking up to Baron Corbin, who was a GM that you know people weren't really into. And just giving him a case and saying, I'm going to do this at Hell in a Cell. And then not going on to win the championship. It just, it kind of took the money in the concept, man in the bank concept and made you go, oh. Because, you know, I think that's, I, th- I don't think it's just the match that people like. It's the fallout. 
you know, when Dean Ambrose cashed it in and, and, and beat um, Roman Reigns in that triple threat match, whatever the hell it was, it was great. When Kane did it for the first time in 2010, you know, the big backlash that was, well, Kane shouldn't be winning it. But in the moment, everybody loved the fact that somebody had won the belt and cashed it in on the same night, especially because he turned on Rey Mysterio and people thought that was cool. So yeah, there are ways and means to do it. Obviously, my favorite one is, is when Edge first did it because we didn't really understand what the rules were. And they came up with this great <laughs> twist that people loved. So I think that's the most important thing. It's all well and good that Braun won. And you kind of think to yourself, ah, it makes sense. You know, WWE loves that kind of a guy. That's why I thought Lars Sullivan would be in it. But I guess they don't think he's there yet. But it's not just about winning it and having a great match. It's about how you then hold yourself as the money in the bank guy. Which is why somebody that I always think deserves credit is Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins was such an asshole with that briefcase. And it really made that character. And, you know, when you kind of think back recently... I mean, Braun Strowman won it last year, and it was just like, well, it's okay. Who won it the year before that? Do you remember? Who won it in 2017? I can't remember now for the life of me. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll look it up. This is the problem. Too much, too much wrestling. There's too, <laughs> there's too much wrestling to... Uh, I'm going back. 2017, it was one. It was Baron Corbin, wasn't it? It was Baron Corbin, wasn't it? It's, uh, yeah, who the hell to... What happened to Baron... Because he, he got screwed over. Who the hell beat Baron Corbin for it? He cashed... Was it John Cena? He tried it, to cash it in it, on it, failed. I, if I... Okay, I, I actually do remember the episode. Like, uh, this was back when, I believe, Jinder Mahal was the WWE champion. That's right. You're right. Uh, and Baron gets, Corbin... got rolled up, like, right? Yeah, Baron was... He was at first walking away from the ring, but then he stopped, turned around, saw the champion was prone and he's like oh i guess i'll cash in now right. so he cashes in and then yeah he gets distracted by john cena jinder mahal rolls him up and that's it yeah i, ju <laughs> I just watched it i just watched it just to make sure i do remember this so there you go right so that's two years of the guy holding it not and that actually may work in wwe's favor to be honest because now we're now we're desperate for it but yeah i, I want i want and obviously the year before that was when dean ambrose cashed in on um uh, on, well, Roman or Seth, however you want to see it. Like, you know, you can argue it both ways. So, yeah, I actually think that there's there's potential here to, to make up for, for lost time. But even if we did, it, it, no matter who we give it to, they've got to feel like, it's got to feel, it's got, it's got to enhance their character. And I think maybe that's something we've got away from recently and that sucks. And that's why, you know, personally, just going through the lineup, I don't see it with Ricochet as much as I want to. Just, just know what WWE does. My pick would probably be Drew McIntyre. But I think that's okay because much like Seth Rollins, if you build Drew McIntyre's character completely around the fact that he's an absolute piece of crap, <laughs> that, you know, relies on this briefcase to the point that you never know what he's going to do. And I tell you, man, McIntyre is such a good character. I don't think they will do this. But if he did cash in on someone like Kofi Kingston on the same night, I think it would actually... I'm not, I'm not, people would be pissed off. Of course they would. But I also think if done in the right way, you would, get, you would elicit the right response in the fact that people would be so mad at Drew that he could take that next step up, which is clearly going to be the plan at some point. Oh, yeah, like it, it would definitely give him some actually good heel heat, you know, just it, him winning the briefcase. And then, you know, after Seth and Kofi or whoever's the champion at the time, all of a sudden you hear those bagpipes. You're like, oh, no, oh, <laughs> you, yeah, know? Sure, yeah. that, you know, it's but, but that's a moment you kind of look forward to, even if you don't really want it to happen. Um, but uh I don't think Finn Balor will win the briefcase because he's he's got a title already, you know. Um, I could also picture Andrade winning it um, because I think Vince has been really high on Andrade for a while now. Um, so yeah, I would say either uh, Drew McIntyre or uh, Andrade um, because I mean, as much as I'd like to see Ricochet Mustafa win, I mean. I think it's a little too early for them. Like I said, I think they're there for the crazy spots, which I'm, which I will enjoy. But uh, so yeah, I'd say my money's either on Drew or Andrade. Andrade, and, I mean, I'd love it. I, I would love Andrade to win it because Andrade is one of those guys that I feel like should be. You know, WWE, even if I don't like looking at it, Andrade is good because Andrade is good. But obviously, ever since Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero, WWE has been looking for a Hispanic style to fit that role. And to me, he's just perfect. Like, he works really well with Zelina Vega. When he cuts a promo, he comes, uh, you know, he comes across well. 
He um, he's amazing in the ring. Like his matches with Rey Mysterio recently were fantastic. So you know, I, I don't. I, I personally don't see him winning, but I would love it. If I would love for them to give it to a guy like that because I think it would negate every sort of every negative booking decision that's happened over the last six months to a year, especially when he first came up and vanished for a while. I think as soon as you get that prize again, if you treated with it right, all of a sudden it doesn't matter because you're the money in the bank briefcase guy, and WWE can get so much mileage and so much leverage out of it. You know, and it's the same with anybody apart from Braun Strowman. I honestly think out of everybody in that, if I had to pick one I don't want to win, well, I know Baron Corbin would actually be, but, but, but for the same reason we've just talked about, those two, not through no fault of their own, were put in such bad positions when they cashed in. It just gives me a bad taste in my mouth. I wouldn't even mind if Randy Orton won it, you know? I, I quite like Randy Orton at the moment. A huge reason is because he's so funny on Twitter. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> he just cracks me up. But it's not the point, is it? It's all about, you know, in 2019, there's many ways to connect and and, and feel engaged with the wrestler. And one of them, for me, is what they do on social media. And Randy Orton just doesn't care. So, yeah, honestly, um, I'd rather Finn didn't win it, only because I'd much rather... Like, I love the fact on this card that, even though I love Samoa Joe, I like the fact he's not in it because it means we can shine a spotlight on the US title. And I'd much rather we were doing that with the Intercontinental title too. I think if you had something like Finn Balor versus... Uh, Lashley, for example. I don't think Lashley's on the show, is he? No, he's not. I know we actually not Finn Balor versus Lashley. We've seen that a thousand times. But you take my point. You know, I, I would just love every other single belt is being defended on here, apart from the tag team championships, which is also kind of weird. But I don't understand why Finn Balor's in it because he's a great athlete and he'll make the match better. But I would much rather. You know, I, I think we're in a great position now with the weird wild card rule. I should actually ask you about the wild card rule. I will after this. But with the weird wild card rule, I. I think it's a real, you know, if it is a it's sort of winds of change, I think one of the first things you have to do is make sure the belts feel like they're more important. And the best way to do that is not have Finn Balor in a world championship match to a certain extent because he's the IC champion. And for that, for him is enough because he's proud to be IC champ. That to me is a real big thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what do you think about the wildcard rule? Tell me about that because I, I, I don't, so many people hate it. I don't think it's the best idea. It does feel reactionary. But I do think it. I think it could be interesting if used in the right way. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely for sure. But you know, a, a lot of people are looking at this as a. Uh, you know, they they say that it's because the the network wants like all the, the the top stars on on the show, especially with you know the Fox deal coming later in the year. Uh, yeah, I mean. It just, I mean, like with this week, we pretty much had like all the, the, the top stars in the company appear on Raw. So, and then on SmackDown, it's like, obviously there were a couple of good appearances on there, but it's like, like, where would you go from there? You know, it, like uh, for next week's shows, I mean, what if the people that turn up are just a bunch of, uh, superstars that haven't been booked well. I mean, no one's really going to care. You know, I mean, does anyone want to see Dana Brooke on SmackDown? <laughs> no. Dana Brooke I mean, does. I mean, no, no disrespect at all to Dana Brooke. But again, it's just, I don't know. The, yeah, the, I just think, I feel like, you know, everybody's right in the sense that, you know, the wild card rule is just, <laughs> there's so much madness behind it i, I don't know um it, again it just makes makes the brand split non-existent at this point oh yeah you know? the, the brand split's dead like I, I think what's happened is somebody wanted to end the brand split vincent man decided he didn't want to because i've said this so much now but you know he didn't he just sold each of them for a billion dollars so he's probably like no we're not selling that's a really bad idea we just sold this for a lot of money so they needed to come up with a concept the only thing that worries me is that you know less people are now going to be featured like rusev has just vanished from the show entirely and as anybody knows if they watch my what culture stuff i'm obsessed with rusev i think he's the best who do you think I mean, let me rephrase that who is the guy or the girl that you like that is currently i mean clearly not dana brooke but that is under the radar that you'd like to see more of and now you're worried about maybe the world cup but who's your everybody has a guy that maybe doesn't necessarily have universal appeal but you want to see them do more of like who is your guy for that and do you worry the world card thing will actually work against them in that respect because it's just now there's less time there's now less time to get people on tv if you've got your top top guys going to both shows 
yeah, like th that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much how it is uh, with this uh, wild card rule. But uh, I mean, in terms of like people who are being underused, I mean, it's hard to pick because again, they put their sole focus on on a few people that they pretty much just leave everyone else for themselves. Like I, I could, I could think of a couple people. I mean, like, uh, like I'll use uh, Apollo Cruz as an example, you know, obviously he was called up to the main roster way too early. Um, but then the, the most recent thing he's done was he was in like, like a, a flexing contest with Bobby Lashley. <laughs> and that was actually a fun, that was a fun segment. You know, it was it was actually really fun. It, it it gave Apollo a chance to kind of be himself, you know, and it's like, and I've seen his matches. He's very athletic. He he's actually really good. So it's like, I mean, what are they doing with him? You know, absolutely nothing. Um, uh, let me try and think of someone else. Uh, maybe like a, a female star, uh, like uh, Ruby Riot. You know. I, I saw her arrive in NXT, and her again, her matches were fantastic. Um, she's a way better performer than a lot of people think she is. It's just, um, I honestly thought, you know, the Riot Squad had a, a lot of potential when they first came up. But just down the road, they became this jobber team to the, uh, the, to the women in the main event. And it, it really, <laughs> I was really sad for Ruby, you know? Um, well, where have they gone, man, right? I mean, when was the last time we saw Ruby? Ever since they broke that team up. That's what I understand. They moved uh, Liv Morgan to SmackDown. And yet, that's it. We don't, we don't hear about anything, right? It just literally it just vanished. Just vanished off the, off the face of the earth. No explanation, no nothing. Yeah, we haven't seen Liv Morgan. Uh, we don't know what Ruby and Sarah are going to do. I don't know if they're going to remain a team or not, but, um, and then obviously with the tag teams, I mean, again, how do you even pick a tag team? Because it's just, uh, for, for the longest time, the raw tag division was a joke. You know, all the good tag teams were on SmackDown. Um, I mean, just I mean, look at, uh, the Ascension, you know, I was, when I was watching old NXT, you know, I think as of right now, where I am right now, they're still the longest reigning NXT tag team champions. Yeah. And, and they were, they were really over, you know, and the, and just where they ended up on the main roster, it's, it, it's criminal, you know, how, how something, how, uh, how someone can fall that uh, that high to fall so fast you know um jeez yeah what would you do so what would you do let's say that tomorrow ww ring you up and they go nicholas please come in and uh, <laughs> and please and please jig, you know, jig everything up and there's no rules there's no rules there's no regulations you can do whatever i know i'm putting you on the spot here so you don't have to say i do this and i do that but just going what you talked about then about some i mean we all talked about how the nxt talent don't really get used how they should but what's the i tell you what let's rephrase it you can pick one thing because my one thing would be right now to really make me care just start giving me storylines that make me want to tune in next week even if they're bad ones that sounds weird obviously bad storylines won't let me want to tune in but my point being is that as soon as you do that uh, i'll have an impetus to, to tune in so even if your stories are bad start trying to come up with ideas not cliffhangers and not twists and turns but just something that it, like the bray wyatt stuff the bray wyatt stuff isn't the greatest thing in the world but i go i'm kind of intrigued to see what happens i'll i'll tune into raw 8 p.m or whenever the hell it is uh, over in america so what one thing would you like to shift so that, you know, we don't call people up from NXT and bury them. And we don't, uh, you know, people like Apollo Crews actually get a, a, fair, a fair crack of the whip. Or if anything else, it just puts the, the environment in a, you know, in a, in a better place to, to incorporate those things. <laughs> all right. Well, first of all, I'm loving the Bray Wyatt stuff. Oh, yeah. It's great. I, honestly, it? I like it. Yeah. I, I honestly can't wait to see what happens when he actually gets in, back in the ring. But... Um, but it's like you said, you know, you want uh, storylines. Uh, you know, I obviously want that as well. But 
just let your superstars wrestle the way they know how to wrestle because the, because that's what makes NXT such an amazing show. These wrestlers are allowed to wrestle in their styles that, that they've learned in their years of in the, in the business. Um, you know, it's like, I've just seen superstars where it's like I've seen them elsewhere or or in NXT or wherever, and they're amazing. Then they're on the main roster, and they're not allowed. It's almost like they're not allowed to show what they're capable of mm. because, I, I mean, I guess the one exception would be, you know, Ricochet. It looks like they're letting him do his thing, which, which is what they should be doing because Ricochet is an amazing athlete. He's going to get really over with the crowd on his ability – his wrestling ability alone. But yeah, I would, I would just tell the superstars, you know, I, I, I would just tell them, Hey, go out there, do your thing, put on a good show, you know, tr try and steal the show if you can, you know? So you, you, it's like, Oh man, keep going. Uh, Cause again, it's like you, you would, you would be amazed at, you know, who actually has, like, more talent than others. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not trying to, like, put anyone on the spot there or anything saying that one's more talented than the other. I mean, they're, all of them are obviously talented in their own way. But, yeah, I mean, just... So, I mean, there's a time and a place for, you know, comedy segments, you know, like going back to the Usos and the Revival with Usi Hot, you know? <laughs> it, it was... Uh, yeah, there's a time and a place for comedy stuff. It's just not... You know, obviously not used in the way that we know it's being used because, you know, they're, they're obviously punishing the Revival. Um, but, you know, if, if they're doing a comedy segment for the sake of actually making the audience laugh, you know, th then it works. But these, again, these are wrestlers. These are superstars, you know. Th they need to feel like superstars. And the only way to do that is to allow them to, to wrestle their style, you know. Um, so do you think, because obviously I've, we've heard Triple H in, in the past say that when new wrestlers come in, they have to adapt to WWE's playbook. And a lot of people also say on top of that, that when they watch WWE, a lot of matches feel the same. Do you think that's kind of something they need to get away from them? They need to scrap this quote unquote playbook, scrap the WWE style and basically give more, give wrestlers more uh, sort of freedom in the ring to, be, to express themselves creatively, not only you know, on promos and stuff, but actually how they wrestle. Yeah, I mean, I know obviously not every wrestler is, you know, great at promos and everything, but it's like if, if they if they compensate for their in ring ability, you know, it's you know they're they're good in my book. It's like that's, so, I mean, I, I definitely don't want someone doing like a five minute promo who doesn't know how to do a promo, but <laughs> but if they say like just one sentence you, you can actually do a lot with with a, a a promo that's only like one sentence you know you could do a lot um but yeah that's uh that's what i would do you know it's just uh nice good man uh like uh i mean you know, like we i think we mentioned like shinsuke nakamura earlier i mean yeah the I literally saw him, like, my first time seeing him was, like, at NXT TakeOver, and then he got called up to the main roster. And I, I, I really think his his talents have been squandered already, you know? I mean, they were squandered a long time ago, but... So, but, yeah, that's what I would do. Because, because that's what makes the, the indie stars so amazing. They're allowed to wrestle their styles, and that's what's getting them over. You know, that's why Omega and Okada and all of them, they're the best wrestlers in the world because they're not, they're, <clears throat> sorry, they're, they're allowed to do what they can do. And that's why you see 
them having these 30 to 60 minute matches because th 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 they want to show the audience that what they're capable of and, and how far they can go. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. I like it. Uh, right. Before we wrap up, I've got my nice generic question. I want to ask you, cause I think you have a good answer. Favorite match of all time. I know it probably changes day to day, but if somebody's like really pressed you on it and really pushed you, where, what was your go to? What's the one that you think? Yeah, that's the, that's the ticket. Honestly, uh, I mean, obviously, it's going to be a Bret Hart match because he's oh, my all time. WrestleMania uh, 13 is mine, man. Stone Cold versus Bret Hart is my favorite. Hell yeah. Uh, but uh, I got to be honest, you know, my, my favorite match is one that a lot of people don't seem to be very fond of for whatever reason. But it's actually uh, Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels Iron Man match. WrestleMania 12. Interesting, dude. Let me know why, because that has aged poorly to a lot of people. A lot of people kind of think that I was good at the time, and now I look back, eh, not so much. What I think is unfair, because you can't really judge uh, wrestling matches sort of within the, the context of the world we live in, because wrestling has evolved and changed so much. But what was it for you that made it so special? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, was a, I was younger back then, you know, a lot more naive. But... Um, I mean, just the, the, I believe this was like the first time WWE ever did an Iron Man match where two wrestlers went for 60 minutes to see who would get the most falls. And a lot of people give the, the match crap because, oh, neither man got a single fall for that whole hour. To be honest, I loved that. Yeah, I like it. You know? It was different. It, it, it's almost like it showed that these two, Brett and Sean, are the they're the best in the world at, at the time you know because they're, they're so good that they can't score a fall or submission on one another now granted and then of course they went into overtime and that's when uh sean got the win and it is kind of weird to pick a match where my favorite wrestler loses but <laughs> that's true yeah but, but in, in the end you know it, it uh Looking back on it, it's like I just have a great appreciation for it. You know, they're yeah, my favorite wrestler. I mean, obviously the guy who he had real beef with back in the day. Um, but I, I don't focus on that. You know, I, I focus what's what's in the ring, and those guys just pushed each other to their limits. Uh, they went to overtime, and I mean, again, like for me, there was nothing like it back in the day. Uh, obviously, because like I said, it was the first ever Iron Man match. Um, but but yeah, like I said, neither of them scored a fall in the hours. So they went to overtime. Again, like yeah, that's the, that's the match I I choose. Brilliant, dude. I know a lot of people aren't very fond of it, but I am. I, that's all the matters, dude. And I love that. I love people that stick to their opinions, dude. Thank you so much. Amazingly, an hour's gone by. It always, it always flies by. Is there anything else you wanted to say or shout out there before we, uh, before we move on? Uh, yeah, actually. I um, also want to give a shout out to a cousin of mine. Her name's Kara. Um, she actually just recently got into wrestling because her, her current boyfriend is a wrestling fan. Um, I've seen you know pictures of them at live shows and I mean, I would only see her like once a year at like family gatherings, but you know, it's just, it's just nice to have something to, you know, talk to her about now. Oh yeah, dude. Uh, and then, I mean, I am on Facebook, but it's primarily just for talking with friends, family and coworkers. Um, uh, I also have a Twitter account, but I, I rarely ever use it. If, if I feel like I really want to like reach out to somebody, uh, you know, I'll, I'll I'll send him a tweet with pictures and stuff like, hey, <laughs> look what I'm doing. But um, but, but yeah, that, that's about it. No, dude. Hell yeah, man. I tell you, that's why I love doing this. The best thing in the world is the fact that wrestling brings people together. Yeah, sometimes people go crazy. But the fact that we can have this chat and you're millions of miles away from me uh, <laughs> is wonderful. And we have a connection. And that's why I love wrestling so much. Dude, thank you so much for my time, your time, man. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Simon. You are you are the man. Don't <laughs> never forget that. <laughs> thank you, dude. Uh, and as always, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, give it your listen to this on YouTube. But make sure you do the other thing that you usually do. So if you are watching on YouTube, head over to iTunes or Google Podcasts or Player FM or 
wherever you want and give us a subscribe on there. It all helps. And then if you don't listen, you listen on audio, go over to my YouTube channel. Just search for Simon Miller on YouTube. It'll be the top one. It's a little cartoon drawing of me, which is the thumbnail, which I may change actually thinking about it. But anyway, give it a subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Also on Twitter, Instagram at Simon316. And of course, patreon.com forward to Simon316 is how you support all of my endeavors. We will be back next week, Wednesday, 2 p.m. Uh, 2 p.m., 1 p.m. even, 1 p.m. BST, maybe Tuesday actually next week, one of the two. The only way to keep an eye out is to head subscribe to the YouTube channel and then you'll get a notification. Either way, have lovely Sundays and I will talk to you again very soon. Yeah.